Welcome to this video on linear, quadratic, and exponential tables. So we can determine if a function is linear, quadratic, or exponential by looking at a table of values. But you always want to make sure that the x values are equally spaced. And then you're going to check for linear first. So let's talk about linear. So first of all, let's check to make sure those x values are equally spaced. So negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6. They all are two apart, so we're good on that. And then you check the y values to determine the function, so the output values. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top and see what I need to add or subtract to get from the first number to the second number. So to get from negative 5 up to negative 3, I need to add 2. Think about our number line from negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. I'm adding 2. And then from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, I'm adding 2. And then negative 1, 0, 1, I'm adding 2. 1, 2, 3, I'm adding 2. And then from 3 to 5, I'm adding 2. So for linear, the first difference is the same. And all that means is what you are using to get from the first number to the second number and then the second number to the third number, they're all those same numbers you're adding to each time. And that's because linear has a constant rate of change. All right, let's look at the quadratic. So let's make sure our x values are evenly spaced. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Yep. So let's see what I need to add or subtract to get from 9 to 4. Well, from 9 to 4, that's minus 5. And then from 4 to 1, that's minus 3. From 1 to 0, that's minus 1. From 0 back up to 1, that's plus 1. And then from 1 to 4, that's plus 3. Okay, so that's definitely not linear because they're not all the same. What you can do if you determine they're not linear is find what's called the second difference. So take this set of numbers that we just found, and I'm going to use a different color, and find the difference between those. And the difference just means what are you adding or subtracting to get from one number to the next? So from negative 5 to negative 3, that's plus 2. From negative 3 up to negative 1, add 2. From negative 1 to 1, add 2. This is looking a lot like that linear. And then from 1 to 3, add 2. So in that case, this is quadratic. The second difference is the same. And the second difference just means this column. All right, for exponential, let's check all of them are the same. All right, so always check for a linear first. So from 1 to 3, that's plus 2. From 3 to 9, that's plus 6. From 9 to 27. Now, I can already tell this is not linear because they're not the same. So then what I would do is check for quadratic. So from 2 to 6, that's plus 8. From 6 to 18, that's plus 12. So it doesn't look like it's quadratic either. So once you determine it's not one of those, well, it's probably going to be exponential because that's all we have left. But what you can do is see what the ratio is between consecutive y values. And the ratio between the values will be the same. Now, this doesn't work for all of the transformations of an exponential graph, but pretty much if you determine it's not linear and it's not quadratic, it's usually going to be exponential. There are other options as well, of course, but in this particular lesson, it's going to be exponential. But let's look at those ratios. So by ratio, I mean the fraction or dividing between consecutive numbers. So 1 over 3, 3 over 9, 9 over 27, 27 over 81, and then 81 over 243. Now, those don't look the same, but they should all reduce to the same numbers. So 1 over 3, that's already reduced all the way. 3 ninths, that reduces to 1 third. 9 over 27, 1 third. 1 third, 1 third. Now, if you don't like dealing with the fractions, you can also go the opposite way and deal with um, numbers greater than 1. So this is what I mean. You can start at the bottom. 
243 divided by 81, that gives you 3. 81 divided by 27, that's 3. 27 divided by 9, that's 3. 9 divided by 3, that's 3. And then 3 divided by 1 is 3. So either way, it will work. Okay, so let's try these two at the bottom. So determine whether the table is linear, quadratic, or exponential. So let's check our x values first and make sure they are going um, evenly spaced. Let's see, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5. If they're not, just get rid of the ones that are evenly spaced. Let's say I had a 0 in here. You just wouldn't use that when you're determining the function type. Okay, so from 26 to 10, that's minus 16. From 10 to 2, that's minus 8. From 2 to 2, that's nothing. From 2 to 10, that's plus 8. And then from 10 to 26, that's plus 16. Okay, that's not linear. So let's see if it's quadratic. From negative 16 to negative 8, you need to add 8. From negative 8 to get up to 0, you need to add 8. From 0 to get up to 8, you need to add 8. And then 8 to 16, add 8. So this is quadratic because my second difference is the same. All right, and then number 2, let's see, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. That works out. Okay, so from 0.125 to 1, let's see, I'm going to use my calculator here. You need to add 0 0.0875. Oh, sorry, 0 0.875. And then from 1 to 8, that's points plus 7. From 8 to 64, plus 56. Okay, this is definitely not linear. It doesn't look like it's quadratic either, but let's check. So to get from 0.875 to 7, I need to add 6.125. Okay, that's definitely not what I need to add to get from 7 to 56. So this is definitely not linear or quadratic, which means it's probably exponential. But let's check. I'm going to start down here at the bottom and divide. So 4096 divided by 512, that gives me 8. 512 divided by 64, that gives me 8. 64 divided by 8 is 8. 8 divided by 1 is 8. Okay, so this is definitely exponential. Another thing you can look for in exponential is if you have like huge jumps in numbers, that's a good indication it's exponential because it's growing exponentially. Okay, you can stop the video now and complete your practice.